How often have you heard? In fact, I'm sorry, I gotta get used to this. How often have you heard someone respond to a message by saying it's just too good to be true? Kind of like that dollar bill. Too good to be true. But you see, the good news is about too hard to believe. But it isn't. The whole Christian event, which we celebrated over the last two weeks, his life, his death, his resurrection, focuses on the encouraging word and affirmation of hope. We have eternal hope. Let's reflect on those first century Christian believers, how they responded to the good news. Remember that Jesus has told his disciples many times that he had to die and would raise from the dead in three days. But what about Mary Magdalene? She responded with fear and or amazement. You see, do not be afraid, the angel says. Do not be amazed, because it's true. For some, the resurrection seemed like an idle tale, as they did not believe. But these words seemed to them unbelievable, that they did not believe. Luke 24, 11. But you see, Mary Magdalene responded with tears. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping in John 20? The biblical text for this service emphasizes doubt as yet another response to the resurrection. Thomas said, unless I see his hands and place my fingers in the mark and place my hands in his side, I will not believe. Seeing without question, we don't know why Thomas was absent when Jesus appeared to the, to, the, to the ten disciples. We know that he wasn't there. Maybe like the ten he was hiding for fear of what the Jewish leaders would do to them if they caught his, Jesus' disciples. We only know that he wasn't there. And of course, after Jesus leaves, Thomas walks in the room, and guess what? They're celebrating. They are happy. They are amazed. They are thankful that their teacher, their friend, and their savior was alive because he rose from the dead. You see, seeing the Lord from his cells and witnessing his crucifixion all reflected on their minds. They embodied seeing his friend and the teacher as the ultimate gift that they could receive. But Thomas wasn't there. Thomas comes to visit them. Excuse me, this wind last night, yesterday really got to me. (laughs) He comes walking in, and they're excited. You can't quiet them down. They say, look, guess what we saw? Guess who was here among us? And Thomas says, Unless I see it, I won't believe it. You see, we have a risen Lord who transformed them and also transforms you and me. When we are prone to fear, convinced we are powerless to achieve the purpose for which the Lord calls us, we need to hear again his commission and his empowering promise. We have been given his power in our baptism. We are his, and in his family of forgiven people with the assurance that we have eternal life. Receiving the Lord's commission, the disciples were called by Jesus to be his successors. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. John 20, 21. Where could you find a more personal and Pacific Calling. Let's hear it again. As the Father has sent me, I send you. If we believe that God sent his Son to the world, then we also need to believe 
that we are also his calling. It remains logical to conclude that the Son sent not only his disciples, but he sends every one of us to do his work. Jesus made two commitments. Jesus grants peace to us and empowers you and me with the strength of the Holy Spirit. We can do nothing on our own. It's only through Christ and the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, that creates that faith, nurtures that faith. Always trust that faith. Look for opportunities to share that with others. But because of Thomas' response, he picks up a fearful name called Doubting Thomas. One dictionary expresses a very doubtful person. I kind of thought, that, thought about that for a while. And on one hand, yes, he was doubtful, didn't believe. But on the other hand, I think we need to consider this. We need to consider the minority view so to speak, and put on a positive word for the Apostle Thomas. The resurrection was so overwhelming. It's stunning good news he couldn't understand, but yet it was too good to be true. How many of you and I are like Thomas? Do you need to see it to believe it? Just like the kids were up here seeing those two paper clips connect together without me touching them. He said, I won't believe unless I see. Do you feel like that sometime in your life when things are very difficult and you have no idea how you're going to handle it, whether it be at work, at home, illness, sickness, getting older? We do have somebody that's with us every step of the way. He's there to give us the strength. He's there to support us. And he's given us unconditional love to us already. So then we know a week later, Thomas is in that room. The doors are locked. They're all talking. And Thomas is sitting, standing there or sitting there with them. Can you imagine what Thomas was thinking? Was he reflecting on his words? I will not believe unless I see and touch. When all of a sudden, Jesus appears. He looks at Thomas and says, put your hand here. Put your hand here. If you were Thomas, what was going through your mind at that time? But Thomas remembered. You see, if I would have had to put my hands in his hands and put my hand in his sides. I could tell you right now, I would paint the floor right there, and you have to pick me up and carry me out. I think all of us would feel like that. But Thomas, thanks to Thomas, Jesus comes and still unconditionally loves Thomas and forgives Thomas of his doubts. Just as Jesus forgives your doubts in your life. There's a story about Martin Luther. Martin Luther was in his study in his home, in his living room, working so hard on, a, on the theses. And all of a sudden, there was a, a knock at the door. And he's just working so hard, knock at the door. Finally, he says, who are you? Luther asks. The voice says, I am Christ. Luther stops doing his work. He thought for a while, walked up, opened the door. He knew it couldn't be true. At least that's what he thought. He gave his visitor one deep searching look from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, searching glancely and quickly asking him one question. Where are the prints, the marks, and the nails? The gentleman who knocked on Martin's door stood there shocked. He looks at his hands, turns them over, and he runs away. You see, 
Where are the prints of those nails? As Jesus sends us out in the world to proclaim his love and his forgiveness, we are his hands. We are his feet. So we need to realize that with his strength and his ability, since he's already marked us and called us in our baptism, we are his. And we need to make sure that we let everybody know about this wonderful gift that we have in Jesus Christ. It's not something that we whisper around among ourselves here. It's something we carry out these doors. It's something we share. We can share that and look for opportunities. So again, I say, where are the marks of the nails of Jesus? They're here. I see them over there. I see him in the middle. I see him in the back. I see him way in the back. And I see him up here. We are his marks. We are his people. We are redeemed for a purpose. And that purpose is to support one another here in this congregation as loving God's people. But most importantly, be boldly and bravely go outside so that others may see who you are. And remember this. When you read his word, he strengthens us so that we can follow his will. When we allow the reality of the living Lord to handle all our fears, all our doubts, and all our hesitation, he's in our lives. When we, his people, gather together, we are present in the insurance of his grace and his love. When we come forth for Holy Communion, the real presence of the Lord is going to be with you and with me. When we have those days, those tough days in our lives, remember that Jesus said, peace be with you. And finally, never forget Jesus' promises based on who have not seen but yet believe. So again, I ask you, where is the print of those nails? They are the marks of love, deep love, the marks of forgiveness. And when we look at these marks, all of our doubts and all our fears should disappear. Is this too good to be true? I say no. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we are his people. And we can proclaim with Thomas, my Lord and my God, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we've been gathered here this morning reflecting on Doubting Thomas. But most importantly, reflecting on how you work in our lives. We are your people. You know each and every one of us, Father, by our name. And you know our lives. And sometimes, Father, when things get rough or tough in our lives or we run into situations that we think we can control by ourselves, we sometimes forget about you. But you never forget about us. So, Father, increase that faith in us. Give us the strength and ability to love one another as we're gathered here. But most importantly, carry this love to others. Amen.